lower the curtain just for a moment so that uh, I can go ahead and get the audio and the visual all set to go, and we'll be back to you shortly. Okay, so the curtain is down. Melissa, this is Raleigh White. How are you doing this afternoon? Wonderful. Can you hear Wonderful. me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Good morning or good afternoon. Oh. <laughs> Hi there, Melissa. I hear you in the background. You're a little bit faint. Maybe you could turn up your mic just a little bit. Okay. Let me do that. Is that good? Yeah, that's much better. Can you also see the pointer? Okay, and also, boy, I see your slides perfectly. Make your living trading gaps. That looks super. Um, Melissa, just a couple of things. I've got a very short introduction uh, that I'm going to make for you, and then I'm going to turn things over to you. And I also thought I would share some uh, relevant uh, statistics about the, the webinar today. We had about 1,300 people register to say that they would attend the event, and we had about an additional 700 or so that said they couldn't make it but they want us to send them a link to the recording. So all told, we have about 2,000 people that said they're interested uh, you know, in our session here, and obviously we're gonna follow up with all of them at that point, at, you know, uh, as soon as the session is over. So I thought it would be interesting to have that background because I noticed that online we only have about 88 to 90 people. That number does tend to fluctuate, but we are going to be reconnecting with about 2,000 people with a recording of the presentation. All right. And let's see here. Melissa, let me see. I, I'm, I'm hearing feedback from me primarily, I think. See Melissa, sound check one, two, three. I'm here. Let me know if you see the red dot. Oh yes, I do see the red dot. <laughs> okay. All right, terrific. Well, if you're ready to go, Melissa, I'm going to raise the curtain, do a short introduction, and we'll take it away. Hi there, folks. I'm back, and we're coming into the home stretch of the Tradeathon uh, today. Our next presenter is Melissa Armo. Melissa is a professional trader and founder of the Stock Swoosh, and this is an educational firm that is uh, started in December of 2012 with a very specific mission of empowering traders with a complete and detailed education to become profitable traders. And in this regard, she has designed courses to assist traders with the knowledge and help necessary to accelerate their journey and maximize their true potential of becoming highly successful and consistent in the markets. And with that, please join me in welcoming Melissa Armo to the Trading Pub and her presentation today on Making Your Living Trading Gaps. Melissa, the floor is now yours. Thank you so much. Thank you, Trading Pub, for having me. Thanks, everyone, for coming tonight. I really appreciate the invitation and the chance to speak to you. And the exciting thing is, actually, in a few slides here, there's a trade that I'm going to talk about that's happening tonight that you could take tomorrow. I did some investigation because I usually watch the market post-market. So since I was on late tonight, I was watching some of the earnings this evening. So we're going to talk about one of the gaps that's happening live right now tonight. So all of you that are here for appointment live presentation are going to get a call by me that you could trade in the market tomorrow if you day trade. So my name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called the Stock Swoosh LLC. And, and tonight I'm going to talk about making your living trading gaps. Now, let me just see here. How do I go to the next slide? There, here we go. So I started my company at the end of 2012, but I actually started trading at the end of 2008. And like many, many people, I 
had no idea what I was doing in the market. And I started trading and risking my own hard earned money. Now, at the time I was doing mortgages, which I did for a long time, but the industry was changing. So I wanted to find a new career. So I essentially decided I wanted to trade for the idea of making a living because I wanted to find a new career. And I was very excited when I found out about day trading because I found out that actually you can do it from your home. And I had been a broker for a long time and I did that for my home. So I liked the idea of working for myself. However, trading is a very different kind of job because you don't have a set salary and you go into the market every day and you don't know how much money exactly you're going to make. You also have to have a very specific reason for taking the trade. And as time went on, I learned that I had to be focused. So I ended up deciding to focus on gaps and that's what we're going to talk about today. If you'd like more information after the presentation, you can email me at melissaatthestockswoosh.com and you can also feel free to call me if you'd like, if you have questions or follow me at Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube. And I have a lot of market calls and reviews that I put on my YouTube site. So the end of the year is coming up. It's really hard to believe. It's almost 2016, soon gonna be the holidays. And it's time to look at really evaluating your career path. And, and many people are not really happy with what they're doing for a career. Or maybe they think that they're not making enough money. It's a good time at the end of the year to think, where are you at? Did you earn the money you wanted to earn this year? You know, are you getting paid for what you're really worth? And not only that, do you enjoy what you do every day? Not everyone enjoys their career. Now, I did mortgages for a long time. I've got to tell you, I didn't, I didn't really enjoy it. I love the money. That's what I loved about it. The nice thing about trading is that I actually, not only do I love the money, but I actually like doing it. And so that's uh, very gratifying for me because for a long time I did a career that was good income, but I didn't like it. I actually love trading. I love charts. I love analyzing charts, like looking at the gap tonight. It's fun for me. So I think you got to love the market if you're going to do this thing for a career. So one of the benefits of having the dream career, which, which I feel like I have right now at this point in my life, is that I have freedom of time. I trade in the morning. I'm done very quickly every day. And I'm my own boss. And I also have a high income potential, meaning the more that I risk, the more that I will make. And as I was saying, it's something that I find fun and enjoyable. Now, at the beginning, when I didn't know what I was doing, it was challenging for me. So there were days where obviously it wasn't fun and I lost. But I found the challenge of it to be still stimulating for me because I'm an intellectual person. So again, if you are an intellectual person and you like that challenge in the market, it, it still can be fun to do it. And also it allows time for leisure. I have all my afternoons free and obviously I'm not working on the weekends unless I'm doing a class. So it's a nice job because you really only report to yourself. So one of the things that we're going to talk about a little bit here today, and this is a, seems like a tiny chart here and if, hopefully you can see the red little pointer dot, but this is a chart of the QQQs. This is the ETF of the market. I usually look at the QQQs and the SPY ETFs when I'm trying to look at the overall market direction, but I specifically trade stocks in the US market. And you can trade gaps in ETFs. Now, the market had a phenomenal gap. This is back in August 24th, okay? This, was, this happened actually in almost every chart that existed in the market when the market gapped down a lot of stocks gap down with the market on this day. People called it a market crash. This really wasn't a crash because in my definition of a crash, a crash is something that happens in the live market day. This happened in the gap. The night before, the market closed up here and then it actually, in the pre-market, gapped down 10 points. This was on a Monday. So between Friday and Monday, the market gapped down 10 points. We have not broken this low since that bounce off the tail lead guy here, which was a big tail, by the way. And actually, this, this is the low of the year, probably, for the market. We are set to make a new high, which I did predict and I've been predicting for like the last year. Even though the market seemed a lot of people to be sideways or somewhat bearish this year, especially in the summer, and especially with the smooth the market had here, I was predicting we would still make a new high, and, and we're gonna. And I don't know exactly where we close today, but we will. Now, how was I able to predict that in advance? Because of the fact that I'm able to read gaps that happen in charts. This is a chart. This is a daily chart of the market. Down here is volume. Here is the price on the side. I have only a couple moving averages here. This is a 200 period moving average. It's a red line. The black line here is the eight. The green line here, I don't know if you can see it, is a 50 period moving average. And the blue line is the 20. And that's all I use on my charts. 
and then I have the candlesticks and I like to have them filled in these are Japanese candlesticks and really what they do is depict the price in the market so I use this information to decide what I'm going to trade every day and that's it I don't have any special indicators or software or anything that I do besides just charts and then I have a live level to order entry platform system where I take my positions and I get out and as I said I'm a day trader however the nice thing about gaps and we will talk this in one of the examples today is you can trade gaps for longer term trades you can use them for options or for swing trades if you want to and the market is a great example of this because I call the market long if you wanted to take the market long overnight you, you could be in it actually you could still be in it or you would still be in it so why trade gaps well trading is a career that can offer you financial freedom fulfillment and not only that happiness and mainly because of the fact that you're not reporting to a boss and you're not working eight ten hours a day and and the market isn't even open for eight hours but I'm just saying I'm done like in the first half an hour hour and so you can have the life you want which is not only a good income but also freedom of time if you can develop the right skills to become successful in a new industry now I find that a lot of people have the challenge of switching careers like going from one thing to a completely different thing but if you're doing something you don't like what choices do you have you could continue doing the same thing you don't like and the money if you're ma not making enough money for 10 years more or longer until you retire or you say gosh darn it you know I don't like what I'm doing I'm gonna learn something else there's a learning curve there's a process no one rolls out of bed and starts making money as a career in the market but the point I'm trying to make and what I'm gonna talk about here today is that it can be done there is a process however if you learn from someone that can mentor you for example like me or other people out there you can you can get there you just have to start somewhere and go through the process of doing it so here's the gap that's happening live tonight why trade gaps you get them every day every day and you get them at night too so I don't trade in the post market because it's like the wild wild rest but I just quickly got this chart in here and I want to show you this is the post market after four o'clock Eastern time this is GPS it had earnings that reported tonight so here was the close so we closed like around here and if you can see this red dot like around 25 something or whatever it was then this big bar happened this big bar happened all the way down the low was like 23 60 something the last time I checked and then it was bouncing around if this gap holds in the gap down tomorrow this is a good short okay so here let me just show you the next one this is the live gap happening this is the daily chart of GPS so what I do is I look at the gap now I usually look in the morning but I look tonight because I actually knew this was had earnings and I had a feeling that this would gap down so I was preparing myself tonight I rated the gap I have a method that I use to rate the gap on the daily chart to determine if it's a short or a long so I did it tonight for those of you that are here this is what is called you know live live TV you could short GPS as a day trade tomorrow and I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the numbers right now this per my system rated 22 points the dream target on this tomorrow is $22 I don't know where it opens until the morning because it could open anywhere between 7 a.m. and 9 30 between the market opens and the pre-market but the dream target on this is 22 and actually that's a realistic target really I, I should say 20 is a dream target but I think this could get to 22 tomorrow it really does have to hold $25 though is the resistance 25 25 or $25 and in fact I'm just gonna write this here in the room GPS equals 22 points and here's the targets and I actually wrote down a few targets here so I'll just give you all of these for the people that are here this is a short okay so you'd be looking to short this tomorrow in in the actual live trading day not in the pre-market now I some people do like to trade I mean the pre-market but I just don't because I feel like I don't have enough control and I like to take my position and put in a stop which I'm going to show you in some of the trades now I will tell you a significant area for this though is called something called a break and it's this number here so if you're watching this in the morning if it breaks that number it's going to fall off a cliff if it breaks that number it should go to 22 okay so there you go those of you that came tonight because I don't I don't think anyone's gonna get the recording by the time tomorrow morning rolls around the market opens or again you could short GBS tomorrow but it really can't go over 25 really 25 25 but really $25 that's resistance in this so 
the thing I like about gaps is you get them every day and you can get it you get a lot of them now personally I like to just pick one and focus on one and personally I also like to focus on the shorts although you can use my system and go long and flip the points now why also do I like gaps because they happen fast for example that stock GPS will probably set up between 930 and 940 945 tomorrow morning hit hard and could go to the first target of 23 by 10 o'clock Eastern time. So you could even make a dollar in like 15, 10 minutes in that very fast in the morning and you could be out. And if you wanna stay in it longer to get it to another number, you could. But what I'm saying is that the setups happen quick and therefore the profits, profits happen fast. And so you don't have to train all day, which is a huge benefit of the strategy that I do. And it's really, you can make decent money on it and so it's like part-time work for full-time pay because you get paid on the share size. For example, if you would short 3,000 shares of GPS tomorrow and it drops a dollar, you'd make $3,000. And that's a lot of money if it happens in 10 minutes. And that's what I love about gap trading. It has a lot of volatility momentum. And also, as I was saying earlier, you can work from home. And it also can help you if you learn how to trade to save for the future because as I was talking about earlier, you can do long-term trades and things like the market or even these stocks to hold them overnight. So if you learn how to trade the market, you can be your own boss, you can set your own schedule, and not only that, it's a very comfortable income. You, you know, you, it depends what you're setting out to do, but for example, $500 a day is $2,500 a week. That's 10 grand a month, that's over 100 grand a year. I mean, that's enough money for people to actually pay to support themselves as their job. And so I think that it's one of these things where you have to decide how much do you need to make and then you back it off with how much you want to risk and then you work yourself up to that point where you feel comfortable doing the strategy to get to that point to have the the money that you need that you could change careers it's it's important to have a sustainable trading method that is consistent in the market that sets up daily for you to do this to rely on as a career it, there are other strategies out there that people can do but if they don't happen on a regular basis or have these kinds of moves you can't have the type of money and profits that's going to sustain you to pay your bills, which obviously everyone has bills they have to pay. They have to pay their rent, they have to pay their mortgages, they have to pay their car payments, whatever. So if you want to trade for a living, you need a strategy daily that is number one, reliable. You know you're going to get a good one, okay, on a regular basis. Number two, it sets up often. And number three is a good risk to reward payout. Now what do I mean by risk to reward? I mean, for every dollar that I risk in a trade, I'm usually looking to make three. Sometimes I make one, sometimes I make two, sometimes you make 10. For example, if GPS sets up tomorrow early, I mean between 9.35 and 9.40, and goes to $22, it'll probably be a 10 R trade, okay? Meaning for every dollar that you risk, you'd make 10 risk units because it's a $2 target if it opens around 25-ish. So this is the type of thing that I'm looking when I'm picking my gaps and again, I'm picking them in the stocks, although you can use them for ETFs, and I'm day trading them, taking the equity position. Now, when I started out, which again, was seems like a long time ago, it was the end of 2008, it's almost eight years now I'm trading, it, I, was, I felt very frustrated because I did mortgages for a long time and I was very successful. And then that industry changed, and that's what made me feel like I had to find a different career. And, but, but this is a lot of the same thing for a lot of the same people. Today's world is just not the same as 25 years ago or even 10 years ago or even five, six years ago before the bank bailout. What we think is a secure job today may be gone tomorrow. And this is where we have to kind of rely on ourselves. We have to rely on ourselves and what are we going to do? We could be great employees, productive, outgoing, hardworking, and it may not even matter to our employer in the end if a company can't keep you on or if a company isn't making money or if they're not doing well. You may not get annual raises the same cost of living or bonuses if you're used to or overtime. All of these things that people took for granted, many companies aren't doing anymore. So if a company has poor management, they may fail and it has absolutely nothing to do with you. And you may be a productive, intelligent person. Well, then what are you going to do? And the nice thing about trading is it's extra money coming in, plus you're learning how to do it, so you'd have something else to fall back on. And I wish that I had learned how to trade a long time ago, like in my early 20s. And, and then I was forced to change careers. So what I'm saying is, you know, if you like the market and you love to do it, even if you like your job right now and you're happy, maybe you learn how to do this thing just in case for retirement, for extra money, for savings, because it doesn't take a lot of time to do it every day. But you can work for yourself if you really want to do it for career in the market and create basically your own job security.
and it creates the extra savings. But you've got to take it upon yourself to learn it, okay, and be excited about doing it as well. So one strategy is all you need, but it has to be a quality one. And what I focus on, like I said, is gaps. And I named my system Golden Gaps because it's like finding gold in the market, just like GPS that I just showed you tonight. That's that's a golden gap. That I'm going to short that tomorrow. And and could it go over twenty five dollars? Yes, it might, but probably not. Okay. So what am I looking for when I say a golden gap? A golden gap is a gap that moves in the direction of the gap. So for example, GPS is gapping down. I'm looking to short it. So I have a system where I look at this where it's gapping. If it's gapping down, I'm trying to determine if it's a good short. Okay. Who makes golden gaps? Institutions. It's institutional money that makes and creates the gap. Some institution, bank, hedge fund, whatever, is selling into the pre post market tonight, started at four o'clock, selling GPS and maybe shorting it too. So it's selling action and shorting action that creates the gap, but it's institutional money because that stock closed, like I said, tonight around $25. And at one point it was at 23 something. So it had actually a $2 set off that happened in that big, large, humongous bar. And there's only one thing that can move a stock like that with volume. It's hedge funds and banks and institutions in the market. And that's what my system pinpoints because that is how you're getting the momentum. You're just riding the coattails of the institutions, whatever they're doing. Now they may buy gaps, but that's where my system comes in because I don't want to short a gap down that's getting bought. And this is where I invented a way by looking at the daily chart to determine if it's going to flip, okay, or if it's going to continue in the direction of the gap, which is what I am looking to do with it. And, and in the case of GPS, I'm looking to short it. So in the case of a bullish gap, say, say GPS was gapping up. It's not, but pretend it was. In the case of a bullish gap, institutions are buying the stock. Therefore, the stock moves higher on the trading day. In the case of a bearish gap, institutions are selling or shorting the stock. Therefore, the stock moves lower in the trading day. And this is just a simple explanation to describe to you what's happening in gaps. But it's really about high probability. I have a system that's a scoring system that tries to pinpoint that there's a high probability it's going to work in the direction of the gap. But it uses advanced technical analysis. Okay, I said to slow down. Sorry, I get a little, I get a little excited. I'm, I'm a little excited about GPS tonight. <laughs> And I have to wait 24 hours, or actually, no, not 24 hours, but <laughs> about 16 until the market opens. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Thank goodness you told me to slow down. Or I just would have just gone and gone and gone and gone and gone. See, it would be better if you could see me live. Or I could see you live, too. <laughs> Anyways, I will try to slow down. Thank you for telling me. I'm not trying to get a perfect score. I'm trying to get a 20 rating. So I have a 26 point system, but I don't need 26. I need 20 or more. So what does that mean? Well, GPS got a 22, so it's good. If I had rated GPS and it got a 17, then I wouldn't be shorting it. Now that doesn't mean you're gonna buy it, okay? But it means it's probably not gonna work out as a short. So that 20 number is the gauge that I use to determine if it's a good short, if it's gapping down, or if it's a good long, if it's gapping up. It only takes about five to 10 minutes to rate one gap if you're new. For me, it takes like less than five minutes. I've been doing this for, like I said, almost eight years. But it sounds like a lot of points, but it's really not that long to do it. And you just have the checklist. And once you get used to doing it, obviously it's easier over time. And this is where the process comes in where you're, you're doing it every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you practice doing it. It's like riding a bike and then you get good at it and the faster you do it. But you're doing all of this before the market opens. So you don't have to sweat a bullet and rush around before, I mean, after the open. You're doing this when you get up. Like you could, you could do it now. I mean, I did it for you tonight. But I'm saying you could get up at 8.30, 8.45, 9 o'clock. You're getting ready before anything even happens, okay? I definitely love what I do. I sustain I love what I do. Yes, I'm on Facebook as well. So my method is a professional bearish gap rating system that I look at 26 points. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. And the reason that I developed this system, as I said, is when I started out trading at the end of 2008, I realized the market was an overwhelming place. 
and there were so many stocks every day they were moving and trading and I didn't know if I should go long or short and there's so many strategies out there and obviously there was a million people today that spoke and probably many different strategies you you really it doesn't even matter what you do as long as it works but what I'm saying to you is and and again this is the takeaway from my presentation tonight besides the fact that you got to love what you do in the market is find something that you really get good at. If you get good at one thing and are making money, you don't have to do anything else. But if you want to do something else, fine. But don't be doing a million things if you're not even good at the one thing, okay? Because you only need one thing to make money to do this for a career. And I have proven that. And that was something that I learned very early on because, because I was all over the place and the, it was like the days that I had losses when I started out, I had so many different strategies I did on the day and so many different directions and so many different ticker symbols. And the biggest days that I ever had was one symbol and one trade and one system and one direction. So you, I'm sure some of you know this. I'm sure some of you know this just from, from trading, if you've been trading for a while. So I use a checklist. I just go off and I check it and it gives me a high probability of success. And I think everybody needs something to give them an edge. I don't use indicators or special things. I like my charts very clean to look at the price, but you gotta have something that is gonna push you over the edge to give you that extra oomph so that you can be successful with this. For me, it is my 26 point checklist. And I've been teaching people now since the end of 2012 and I've taught people to be successful with my method in the market, and, and they've stayed with me. Now, I run a live trading room where I call my trades out live. You can do them with me if you're in the room, okay, which, which people do. Now, I've taught the class to people, and some of them are trading by themselves because they don't want to be in the room, and I've taught them everything they know how to do. So it's really up to you. Now, how do I find the gaps? Okay, everybody has asked me, well, you... Everybody has a, a system where they're entering their orders, like a level two with the charts. This is just a scanner that is automatic that comes with the platform. It's free. You can buy a separate scanner if you want. There's so many out there. Again, I don't sell any of this type of software. This just comes for free with my charting package. And it lists the active NASDAQ stocks, the gainers and the losers. Because I'm looking at the shorts, I look at the losers in the NASDAQ here and the losers in the New York here. So this is 40 picks that I could look at tonight if I wanted or even tomorrow morning and go through and you just and you just rate them all. So you could rate 40 things if you want it to the downside and then here's the upside. Okay. Now sometimes things gap because of earnings, which is the reason GPS is gapping tonight, but sometimes things gap for other reasons too. Reasons that have nothing to do with the actual earnings. Sometimes it's a news gap you you never know okay but it does have to be gapping it could gap in the post market like tonight or it could gap in the pre-market so how can you make a career out of this because you get a lot of gaps in earnings season which we're in right now you get three to five a day yesterday was just ridiculous target was a good play yesterday qcom was a good play yesterday uh gpro was a great play yesterday there were so many good plays yesterday you could have done everything and more it's it's earnings season right now and so there's so much money to be made in what i do in gap trading and you want to make the money when the market's busy and you don't want to trade when the market's not busy for example next week is the thanksgiving holiday the market is open friday but will be dead and probably will be dead on wednesday and you know what's interesting because of what the market's doing i wouldn't even put it past the market to rally and make a new high over the over the holiday week which is really bizarre but we're probably just going to rally straight on up now and, and get over the high and that could even happen over the holiday when there's low volume but anyways as far as a day trader you really don't want to trade when there isn't a lot to do because you get trapped in stuff and you won't get the moves and everybody's on the holiday so when you got a lot going on which we have this week you do it and you play them and you get it now in non-earning season you still have gaps every day I usually get three to five good ones a week. So you don't get like three to five a day. You may get like one a day or two a day. And then you narrow it down and you rate the gap. I'm talking about ones that would rate 20 or more. You get you get tons of gaps every day, but you don't get the good ones. And you're only going to make money on the good ones. Okay? 
So a quality gap, like I said, is one that rates high enough to trade based on my 26 point system. So I'm trying to make $3 for every buck. Now, do I always do that? No. I'm going to go over trade from today. I did not make $3 for every dollar of risk today in the trade that I did today. I shorted BBY because it went to a, a target, an area, and then I, then I got out. So, but when I figure it out, like I did tonight in the GPS, I'm figuring out the targets, where it's gapping, and my plan of action is that it is, has the potential to move to that number. Now, do I know absolutely it's going to? No, because I have to wait till the open. I have to wait till 930. But in the morning or at night like now, I'm trying to figure out everything to get prepped and ready to go. And then I have to wait till it opens to see it. Because like I said, I'm not in it until it actually opens. And I'm, but I am looking for a good target. And that's what I'm trying to do. I don't want to make a half risk unit. I don't want to risk a dollar and make 50 cents. I don't think that that's worthwhile. It's not that you can't make money doing that, but you will have some trades that lose and you got to cover those. And then obviously your platform costs and room costs and things like that. So you really have to be looking for stuff that's going to move a dollar or more. $2, $3, and I have found the best stocks are actually not that expensive. I love trading stocks between about 10 bucks and like $45-ish. And, and I'm not saying I won't do something $70 or $100 or more, but like you will get stuff that moves two to $4 in that range. And it's, and it's an affordable range to day trade to take the positions with leverage. I rate my gaps in the post or pre-market using the daily chart. So let's look at this past week. Now, tomorrow's Friday, so we can't talk about tomorrow, but I did just tell you, I just, just, I just did tell you what the good one is for tomorrow. But we're gonna, go, we're gonna go back to the last week of the trades. Today was BBY, okay. So here, for those of you that don't know what a gap is, let's go over that first. So the stock closed, this is a one minute chart for BBY. So it closed, this is Wednesday night. Okay, Wednesday night, which was last night, today's Thursday, it closed like around this number up here. It's very, very small. It was like 31 something or whatever it was. Then in the morning, I got up. This actually had earnings today and it, and it gapped in the morning. Okay, so you wouldn't have seen this Wednesday night. It happened Thursday morning, which was this morning. And then I got up and I rated the gap. So this is a one minute chart. So this is the close at four o'clock and this is the 930 bar. So in this movement is where the gap is happening. All a gap is is when a stock closes at one price the night before and opens at a different price the next day, it's gapping. That's, that's all that a gap is. It could be gapping up, it could be gapping down, but like I said, I like the shorts. And the reason I like the shorts is because they move fast. Panic tends to come into a stock faster than buying. For example, this market, oh, this market is, is so amazing. And this is one of the reasons why the market is gonna take off like a rocket and never look back and go to some crazy number, which, which could be over the course of the next one to five years. But people are not really heavily buying the market right now, but they're gonna. They're gonna when everybody knows, which I already know from because I, because I, because I understand gaps and that's how I'm reading the market so well, is people, people think about buying. They're like, should I buy? Maybe I should buy. Let me think about it. Hmm, should I buy? Let me think. Let me just think about some more. And even traders are like that. Even regular people are like that and traders are like that about going long. Even though regular people love to go long, more than they love to short, and I have no idea why, maybe conceptually people just understand going long or buying, but actually shorting is very easy to understand, okay? You're betting that the stock is going to go down in price. That's all that shorting means. And so when I got up in the morning, I looked at BBY, I was betting that the stock would drop. So I shorted it here, got the drop, boom, and I got out. And that was a beautiful call because guess what? It ended up flipping later in the day because the market rallied hard and BBY then flipped. But I made money on the short side of it with an exact entry and exit in it. And it was a great call, but I betted that it was gonna go down. It didn't go to a bigger number today though because of the market. But in reference to shorting, getting back to what I was saying, panic will come in because people have no thought process involved with fear. They are long a stock, the stock gaps down overnight. For example, say you are long GPS right now. 
what are you doing? You're in panic mode. You might be selling out of your long position right now at 538. You might say, oh my gosh, what should I do? Maybe I should wait till tomorrow. Maybe I should wait. What should I do? Probably you'll wait till the open and sell it into the open because you don't know what to do with yourself. You're in panic mode, okay? There's no panic mode with going long. Now, I'm not opposed to going long. You can make money going long all day long. You should, the markets are long. But I'm just saying, people think about it and think about it and think about it and think about it. You don't think about selling when you're down money. And so I like to short as a day trader and there's a lot of money to be made as a day trader to the downside. If you know how to do it, which I do, and I'm teaching people in the class because panic sets in fast and the momentum sets in fast and the moves that happen are quick and fast and you're done early and you make good money and you don't have to wait forever for it to set up and go, okay? Anyways, this was the BBY. So the entry, I shorted it at 29.30. Stop was over 29.60, so it was a 30 cent stop and I made $1,500. Now this was not a a three hour trade, but I was really happy that I got out of it there, which I knew to do. And I also made this money in seven minutes. So not only is this a way to make a living because $1,500 is $1,500 and $1,000 a day even is, is five grand a week. Okay. And that's 20 grand a month and that's 200 grand a year. And that's enough money to live on. But the thing is that it's the quickness of it too. Okay. It's the speed of the execution. And here's, here's my P&L, the money I made in this today, okay? And it, the thing that, that amazes me about this one today, and the whole room made money, because I screamed, get out, was that this actually ended up getting bought later in the day. <clears throat> and it got bought because the, the market rallied so strong. And it came into an area that was a target, and the, and the market was strong today. And a lot of things rallied today with the market. But later, okay? Again, I'm looking to play this beginning period. All right, let's go into the next one. So that was today, which was Thursday. So the other day was Urban. This was another gap down. We are on, again, a one-minute chart. I play. I trade on the one-minute chart to take the entries. I pick the gap on the daily prior to the open or at night, like I did in the GPS tonight. So this was Urban. It closed up here the night before, and then it gapped down here in the morning. So this is 4 o'clock. This is 9.30. Again, that's all that a gap is. And then I'm waiting to short it, okay? Because I rated this gap and it rated good as a short. So here's the move right in here. So this is 9.30, do you see this? This is the short move and boom, you're out. So this one was an entry, I shorted it at 19.80, stop was over 20.10. So the risk I'm taking is a differential from the price I'm shorting it at and where the stop is, okay? So the risk is 30 cents. So for example, if you take 1,000 shares, you're risking 300 bucks. 2,000 shares, you're risking 600 bucks. 3,000 shares, you're risking 900 bucks. That's the risk. If it would go over 2010, you would be out with a loss, okay? So the stop is the protection. It's like the insurance. It, it ensures that I will lose no more than this amount that I'm sizing myself for, which is 30 cents. So this again is something that is really, I don't know, I don't know why actually, I have no idea why and I never realized this until I started teaching the class, but people really struggle with position sizing themselves correctly. In other words, let's just say you have three good trades. One trade works, you risk 300. One trade doesn't work, you risk 600. Do you see how that's skewed? You have to risk 300, 300, 300, 300. 600, 600, 600, 600. Every trade that you take, the risk amount needs to be the same, but the stop won't be. So you have to determine that because the money amount monetarily needs to be so that your results are equal and consistent if this is what you're doing for a living. The risk amount monetarily needs to be the same. The stop will not always be the same, as you'll see in the examples here today. But you have to size yourself yourself we do it with a calculator before you take the trade or i do it in my head because i'm good with arithmetic okay and if you're good with numbers you can do it on your head 30 cents you know right away boom 1500 shares 450 and this is how you do it or you can have a calculator but that really is something that i find that people don't know how to do and then they come to me and they learn how to do that too because you you might even be doing something right now and actually you might actually be able to make money in something and you, you're not even sizing yourself right and then you think you're losing but it's just because you're not sizing yourself right so think about that too 
you know it's this is all part of it this is why you have to think of it like a business how much am I risking how much am I making where am I going at where's the target where am I getting out okay anyways the profit in the urban was 2400 with this exit and this went a little bit down too and went to 20 something 1920 something this was a good trade too this is a 2R trade but again 11 minutes again the shorting concept boom boom okay the concept of the sell-off happening quickly 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 to make the money if you had a choice to trade all day and make $2,400 or trade for 10 minutes and make $2,400 which choice would you choose I would choose to make $2,400 in 10 minutes. And actually, if someone said to me, Melissa, you can make $3,000 or $3,500 if you trade for six and a half hours, you can make $2,000 and trade for 10 minutes. You know what I'd say? I'll make $2,000 and trade for 10 minutes. You know, I, you got to have a life, you know, too. And when I did mortgages, I worked so many hours and had absolutely no life. Oops. And, and, I, and I don't want that anymore. So the great thing about trading is that I'm making money quick and I still have a life. Now, let's look at this one. This was from yesterday. This is the GoPro. So this closed the night before. Again, we're on a one-minute chart. Up here around 4 o'clock, we close. This was a good one, too. 9.30, 9.31, 9.32. It's a one-minute chart. Before this even opens, I know I like it. It's a good gap. I know the target's $19. I know I'm going to watch this one today. Okay. Actually, this was not a gap on earnings. I forget the reason for the gap, but it wasn't an earnings one. But I saw it gapping in the morning, okay? And here was the short right there. And boom. Now, it went to 19 very quickly, but I will tell you that it actually went a little bit more. So here's, again, you could have held it more, but it was to the target. You're out. Price of the entry was 1985. Stop was 2010. Again, if it had gone over 2010, you would have been out, and you would have been out with a loss. This was a good risk, 25 cents. So if you had 1,000 shares, it's 250 bucks you risk. 2,000 shares, $500. And, and you know that's how it goes. So if your goal is to make $500 a day, again, you know you're, you could very easily make that number if you risk anywhere between three and 500 even. That's only even one, one and a half R. Okay, now I'm risking more than that, but I'm just saying if you're starting out. But if you did this with an advanced risk and held it to 19, it was 42.50. This was a great trade because of the movement, because it moved almost a dollar. It was a 3.4, and again, you're looking for three. So I knew 19.19, and actually it broke 19. Total time in trade, though, 10 minutes. For some people, to make $4,000 in one trade is an entire week's worth of profits of work and you don't even have to do anything else now let me see Benny here is asking a question do I go through a prop firm for leverage assuming you're trading based on shares I personally trade at a retail firm but you can trade at a prop firm yes you can there's many different options out there available for people however I'm trading with leverage but it's four to one you can trade with leverage of more than four to one at a prop place you have to check the different places out there and I do your due diligence on checking places, no matter even if you go to a retail place, okay? Either way. Nur, how would you like me to elaborate? Nur is asking me to elaborate more. I'm going over some of the trades in the last week. Tell me how you'd like me to elaborate. I, I can't bring up my live charts with the PowerPoint. I didn't download the right thing for that. I can go over whatever I can with the charts I have up. The scoring method I actually teach in my class I couldn't go over that in an hour near it's it's a 16 hour class um, so I'm not sure exactly what I could answer in enough time here I only have another 15 minutes to talk I do have tons of videos though near on YouTube if you want to go watch my videos on YouTube you'll you'll learn more about what I do uh, because of the I, I mean I have a thousand thousand videos on YouTube uh, what am I looking for to happen during the first 15 to 20 minutes of the trading day to confirm a trade? Well, first of all, I'm looking for it to meet the rating or I'm not even watching it. So boom, that's it. Like I wouldn't even be watching GPS tomorrow despite the fact that it earnings if it didn't rate over 20 and it rates 22. So that's number one. Secondly, I may not wait 20 minutes. Robert's saying, what am I looking for? I may not even wait 20 minutes. So I, some of these trades have been at 931, 935. So I'm saying that I want it to set up by 10 
10, 10 a.m. And that's 30 minutes. But I'm not necessarily waiting 30 or waiting 15 or waiting 20. I'm looking for it to do something that I call a set and a trigger, okay? It sets and it triggers. And the trigger means take it. And that was the best thing, meaning short it or enter the trade. That was the best thing about the, uh, the BBY today with the entry that I got in that to short it at 30. It's the price action that I'm watching in it. Here, let me go back to this BBY because this is a really, really, um, The best way I can describe this just in layman's terms, okay, okay, so the stock gap down, gap down, open, rallied, rallied made the tail, okay, pretend this is moving, I know this isn't moving, but I'm going to, I'm going to talk like the stock's moving to you right now, BBY, open, first of all, gap down, gap down $2 or whatever it was, okay, it doesn't matter, gap down, I'm watching it, what does it do, it goes higher first, breaks so it opens and actually goes higher first drops through the open goes red this is all happening in 60 seconds but in this is me melissa arm i'm watching it i'm like oh it opens rallies breaks fails to go higher opens the next bar holds goes over the high rallies big the next bar opens and immediately sells off again so what am I looking for? I'm looking for the stock to set up, and I shorted this bar, but I'm telling you, I'm not waiting 15 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes. I'm waiting until it triggers. I don't know when that is. It'll happen between 9.30 and 10, but I'm watching this live. It's flat right now. If you lived in my brain, when I'm calling the trades and taking the trades and getting ready to pounce on the stock laying on my keyboard, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing what I just told you, and what I'm seeing is, boom, weakness. Because I'm seeing that this stock is, in fact, not going to go higher. I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm trying to describe it like this was moving because everything I just described is like, oh, my Lanta. <gasps> take it, take it, take it. Because that price action that I'm describing is really institutions. Because what made this do this thing here and hold and then sell off? Selling, shorting, boom, okay? Somebody came in and just said, mm, and they sold a position there. And that's what makes the red. I don't know if that explains it. Um, if you want a large amount, yes. I mean, I think it's, I mean, again, if you if you have a massive account and millions of dollars and whatever, you can trade in the post and pre-market. For me, I feel like a, it, the, the day of the market is regulated. It's, it's just very different in the after hours. It's, it's not regulated. It's like the wild, wild west if there is one of the, of the market. I just prefer to trade in the live day. I, just, I feel I have more control if I get in, if I get out. Like I can press a button right now and short G, uh, GPS. And then if I press a button to get out and I'm up, I might not get filled. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to deal with that. So that's why I like trading on the actual open. So I trade on the open. I only trade between 9.30 and 4. But like I said, I usually trade between 9.30 and, and 10, 10, 15. All right, let's go to the C, C, CVLS or CLVS. This was on, uh, whatchamacallit, the Monday, okay? So this stock, again, is a one-minute chart. Closed up here, gap down. Again, if I'm looking at describing this if someone say Melissa what are you looking to happen I'm, I'm looking for this to to do exactly like what this one did too do you see this it's, I know it's so small here but it's it's similar to the BBY in the sense that it's like well this is telling me that this this thing isn't going anywhere but down does that make sense so then I'm looking for it to trigger and then I short it this happened to go to the to the target right away in five minutes, which was $26. This had a big stop though for this stock price. So the price of the short was 28.25. Stop was over 30.10. If you took 800 shares of this and exited at 26 bucks, you made $1,800. And again, for six minutes of work, $26 was the target. How do I know where to get out? I have exit signs that I use and targets. If it goes right to the target, I'm out of the target and that's it. I hold it and I look if it starts backing up if it starts, if it goes to the target and it starts backing up, then I just take it. 
Now, if it doesn't go to the target but has a move, like for example, let's say something moves a dollar. It moves a, I'm a, let's say I have 5,000 shares of something that moves a dollar and it starts backing up, even if it's not at the target, I'm taking it. Do you know what I mean? Like money is money. Again, this has to do with money management besides the targets. I'm looking for the targets, Mir, but, but you have to money manage yourself. You're up 1,000, 2,000, whatever. You like, and it starts backing up, you take it. You can always take another trade in it. I do sometimes call second trades in the same gap. Not all the time, but sometimes, although I usually only do one. And this was last Friday. Boy, Fridays are good days lately. This, this was last Friday. This was Fossil. So again, what happened here? Closed up here, gap down. Again, what happened here? Describing this. Everyone's like, what, how do you know? Open, try to go higher, couldn't do it. Open, try to go higher, couldn't do it. Broke the low. Boom. What do you want? Does someone have to scream in your face to tell you to short it? It's not a long. Okay? It's, this, isn't, this isn't a long. Okay? This is that price movement that I'm watching in live time is, is, is telling me I'm not going higher and I'm not going higher and I'm breaking and therefore I'm not going higher. And, and it doesn't go higher and it goes lower. So the short was here. Boom. And this actually went farther and I got out of it into the morning. But this actually was one that actually ran all day. Price of the entry was 35.90. Stop was over 36.50. It was a risk of 60 cents and I made over two grand. I was in it for 20 minutes and that was it, but I will tell you the stock actually ran $4 in the day, which I kind of laughed at myself and went back and looked at it, but I was out very quickly and this is the money that I made on this last Friday, but I, I could have been in this all day. I just don't like to do that, but you can, but you could. I don't know the daily chart in this, but I think it ended up going more than $4 in the day, but I got out of it into the first move because it went to the first target. I was up a lot of money and again, I you know, $2,000 is $2,000. Um, double shooting star here said, I, I don't know some of those fancy words, but I'll believe you if you tell me that's a shooting star. I love that word though. So here's an example. If you did every call in the last week of the golden gaps, fossil, CLVS, urban, GoPro, and BBY, you could have made 12 grand in the last week. That doesn't include the GPS for tomorrow. Now this is an advanced risk, but do you see here how you can make a living doing this? Let's just say you didn't even risk the an advanced risk let's say you only risked half that's still six grand in a week let's say you risked a quarter okay that's still three grand in a week and many people are not making money trading at all it's about the focus the pick the gap rating system watching one thing knowing the exact entry and exit and getting the move in it i'm just looking for the move i'm just looking for the move i'm just looking for the move okay but i got to get the right pick because if i don't have the pick right which I gave you. I just gave you the pick for tomorrow. And I gave you the numbers too. And I put them up in the room. So you can copy and paste and remember tomorrow. But the pick is it. So you get the pick. And you know it's a good pick. Because the setups happen so quickly. If you're scanning and scanning and scanning. It's 10 o'clock. Fossils have already moved $3 by 10 o'clock. And you missed the money. Okay. How do you know what the market open your entry price will be? I don't until it opens. I don't know where it's going to trigger. I have no idea. Like example, GPS, if it goes over $25, I'm probably not shorting it tomorrow. Although I said 25, 25, but I, but, but I don't know until it opens. I'm not in it until it opens. And that's why I'm not in it until it opens. I don't know until it opens, but I know what I'm looking for. And then if it does what I want and holds the numbers that I see on the chart prior to the open, I take it. Okay. So I do not take it beforehand. I have to wait. I don't know the exact number of shorting it at until it opens because what if it doesn't even set up? So this, you know, this is earning season profits. Tons of gaps, lots of things to do, but this is only one play a day. And that's all that you need. One play, one strategy to make money in this if you want to do it for a living. You really have to have a plan of action to win daily. That's strategic. And this is where my 26-point rating system really helps me know what to do because it really is picking the right stock every day. I have the right stock every day. I make money. You get the wrong stock, you don't make any money, okay? And I never go long and short the same stock on the same day, by the way, just so you know. So the philosophy behind my 26 points is really to analyze a large time frame. So I use a daily chart for the 26 points to make the trend decision, the directional bias for the gap on the day. It doesn't have to be in the long-term trend, but it has to be on the actual day that I'm playing it. And all large traders of every kind look at large time frames to make decisions, particularly institutional traders. I make the entry decisions and the exit decisions on the one minute chart with a high degree of accuracy and focus like I showed you. And that's how I'm getting the risk to reward. So I'm looking at the larger picture for the pick. 
and the directional bias on the day, on that live day, not in the overall longer term trend, but on the day, because I'm a day trader. And then I do it on the one minute to get the entry. And as I was telling you, it's really about trading with size. If you're a beginner, you take small size. Then you bump it up a little bit. Then you bump it up a little bit more. But this is how you get to the point you're making a living doing something with it. So even if you made, like I said, three grand in the last week, that's still real money. Okay, that's substantial money. So for example, like even the fossil, if it dropped a dollar, you could have made 200 bucks. It's only the difference between the amount of the move of the size. It's trading with sizes, whether it's 200 or 2,000, the stock's doing the same thing. So this is why you've got to get good at one thing. And this is, again, where the edge comes in, understanding that to do one thing, that's all you need to make money, and you get good at it. But many people don't ever stick with one thing and get good at it. I've been trading gaps now for almost eight years. This is why I'm an expert in trading gaps and why I can do something like BBY today and short that stock and make money in it, even though it flipped and went long. And one of the reasons I've called the market so well, because I'm doing this same thing for eight years and nothing else. And you know what's really funny? I like to short and I'm calling the market long. And I call the market long even when it gapped down. So it's the, I will tell you, when you get good at doing something even in one directional bias, you'll get good at doing the thing in the other directional bias too because I now know what weakness looks like. And that's how I knew the market wasn't breaking because I can tell what weakness is. I know it and it wasn't there in the market. So you all you have to do is just get good at one thing in one direction and that's all that you need. And then you add the size, and that's how you make the money that you can pay your bills doing it. So I teach a class. It's a 26-point reading system. It teaches how to find the targets, the entries, and the exits. And I teach people how to trade the stock on the day. If you want to become a member of the live trading room, you need to be a student of the course. And I teach the 26-point checklist. So gaps are very useful tools to trade because you can use them, like I said, for options trading or swing trading if you really want to. And... This is one of the ones, oh my gosh, this is GPS. I even forgot I put this in here. <gasps> this was the chart before the gap. You could have been swing short this since the prior gaps. I even forgot I had this in here. <laughs> this, this had gaps prior in the chart here and here. You could have been swing short this back since October. I forgot I even had it in here. Look at that because I did the webinar before. This is GPS. You could have been short this stock as a swing trade back from the gap that happened back up here. And you know what? You'd be up $15 tonight. Isn't that funny? Anyways, I just want to let you know I'm teaching normal, regular people. I'm not teaching people that have necessarily been trading for a long time, although I have taught some people have been trading for a long time. But gaps were something where there's just not a lot out there about gaps. So because I decided to focus on this one specific thing and because I... I created my own system, which nobody else has, which is a 26 points. I've, I've taught people that are regular people that are just learning from me and taking my calls in the room. You, you don't have to have some special high degree to do this. If you do, fine, great. But it's really about learning how to read price action, like I was describing to you in the one minute chart that tells me that, that it was good, you know, and, and that it's going to work. So just really quickly here, I'm going to go through. I know we're running out of time here. I just got the beep. <laughs> Everybody. If you're interested in the class, I teach a class. It's the Golden Gap course. It's online. Retakes are free. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. It's this weekend. If you want to learn for this earnings season, Saturday and Sunday, November 21st and 22nd, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time, cost of the class is $39.99, but I'm offering a special for webinar people, anyone that's here. And Yana put it in the room, you get a 10% discount and you can be in the room for free to the end of the year if you want to learn my method and then you get my calls, just like all the ones I just showed you for the last week. So I have people sometimes that come in and they make the money for the class in one trade. It's up to you how much you're risking, obviously, but that's happened a lot. You have to do the calls that I make, but why wouldn't you? Anyways, the deadline for this offer is tomorrow on Friday if you want to sign up at 5 o'clock Eastern time. Email me at melissathestockswitch.com. Again, the class is Eastern Time, 9 to 5, this Saturday and Sunday, and I'm offering a great deal, only $3,600 for the class and then to be in the room till the end of the year. Uh, let me just see if I have anybody's questions here. Anything else? So the whole motto is to empower yourself to trade, and you've got to learn how to do it if you want to make money, but the idea is that you can. Does anyone have any other questions? Thanks so much for having me, Trader Pub. And 
watch GPS tomorrow. But it really has to hold $25. Let me just see if there's any other questions. I think that's it. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Yana. Thanks, Trading Pub. Have a great trading day tomorrow. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thanksgiving, trade of on. Happy Thanksgiving from New York. Have a great night.